first for the Nets. Oh, 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 Jalen Smith. That is a play to oh, oh, What a tackle by Jalen Smith. Welcome to the Frisco Report, guys, on this beautiful Tuesday night. If you missed Saturday's show, Joe and I, we linked up on Saturday. We made a special edition Frisco Report, guys. So if you missed it right after this one, go watch that one. We talked about a lot of things, Gerald McCoy, uh, a, a lot of these players that we think the Cowboys brought in, haha, <laughs> Clinton Dick, stuff like that. But before I get started, you know who's on the other side. What's going on, Joe? How's your week been so far? What up, what up, man? We're, we're back, full effect. We're ready to do this, man. Lots of great topics coming up here, guys. Absolutely, and we we got to dig right into this one. A seven-year vet announced his retirement. Number 72, the center, Travis Frederick. Initial reaction to that, Joe. Um, you know, 29 years old, seven seasons in the National Football League. Um, you know, sad. Sad ordeal, but I understand where he's, you know, I understand as a fan, you know, I can't be mad at him, but what was your reaction? Um, man, my reaction at first was uh, not really surprised. You know, I, I really didn't panic or get surprised by it because, you know, I know he was dealing with the, uh, the Guillain-Barre syndrome, and uh, I feel like it probably – he felt that it limited him, and he, maybe he feels like he's still not 100%. So – I'm not surprised, you know, and uh, 29 years old, 2013 draft pick, um, you know, pretty much six years. I think we got, what, about six years out of him, six, five or six years, I guess. Yeah, yeah, because so, seven years. It would have been seven, but he missed all of uh, the 2018 season. Yeah. So it, it is a big loss, you know. It's not to say that, no, this isn't a big loss. It, it is a big loss. That's your anchor. He spearheads it, you know, controls the, the huddle along with, the, with Dak and uh, – the running game and calls the protections. That's the thing that a lot of people don't don't realize with the center. They they call the protections, you know, uh, along with with the the quarterback. So you got to have your your center and your quarterback have to be in sync. And I think Dak and Frederick, you know, they worked really well. So we'll see what they do there. But yeah, man, it's a a big blow to the Cowboys' offense. Absolutely, and you know, Travis Frederick in his uh, announcement, uh, he did uh, reference to the autoimmune disease. Um, and for the guys that don't know, it affects the nervous system, and uh, it knocked him out of the entire 2018 offseason and and regular season. Uh, he pretty much lost strength and motor skills, but you know he came back. Joe in 2019 played all 16 games, made the Pro Bowl, and I'm wondering if if, if this autoimmune system came back up. Because the chances mm -hmm. of that of that autoimmune system, when, when you beat it, there's a there's a possibility it can come back, and so I wonder, you know, did it kind of affect him, you know, in in, in the season last year, or, or is it something that he's noticing those signs are coming back? Because remember, it all started off with stingers, you know, mm -hmm. when at training camp, and so they shipped him off to a special doctor, and they said, whoa, wait a minute, this is more serious than what we thought. This is more serious than a, than a stinger. Um, yeah. So, you know, it, it sucks. And, you know, I, I go back, Joe, to Andrew Luck. You know, he retired real early in his career. Um, so, you know, is this a trend now? You know, younger players are, are more looking at their health and, and the other side of things? Uh, no doubt, man. You're, you're seeing this is becoming a lot more common now. You know, uh, Chris Borland, the, uh, the linebacker from San Francisco, the concussions. I think he – I don't even know if he played his – rookie year or he, he retired real early i don't need, you know yeah and he was yeah, a good luke linebacker Keatley. yeah luke the, yeah that's the most recent one hell of a linebacker man one of my favorites so you know as as a as a fan of of the dallas cowboys you're also a fan of the nfl and a lot of these star players you're like man that's a hell of a player you like to watch these guys you know what i mean that's why everybody watches sunday night football monday night because you you want to see the star players and luke keekley he was so fun to watch man and uh, he was it was a shame man and and yeah like you mentioned Andrew Luck that was another one just a lot of injuries took him out and uh, he felt that he couldn't go through the rigors of uh, another off season and that kind of thing so yeah man I think you're seeing uh, more more common now you know especially with the the advanced technology there is to you know do brain scans and your health and you know your DNA like can, like are you gonna be able to live 
a comfortable life after football. And that's what I think a lot of these young exactly. guys are starting to think about. Exactly. And this is what Travis Frederick said in, in, in his statement. He said, uh, I made my return to the field, played well overall, was selected to the Pro Bowl, but it was it was a difficult year for me. Um, each day I faced a struggle. I could no longer perform at my highest level. Playing well is not what I expect of myself and is not uh, not what my teammates deserve. Because of this, I know my days as a football player are done, and, I, and I'm proud of what I have accomplished in my career, and I walk away with my head held high. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, I mean, that's that's Travis Frederick, man, just really professional uh, through his whole career, you know, and uh, if we could go back in time and just, just remember that draft, 2013, and, and I, I won't lie, when, when the pick came through, well, even before the pick came through, everybody wanted the defensive tackle, a wide receiver, a safety, right? Mm-hmm. We make the trade with San Francisco, we move all the way to like... 29, was, wasn't it? Yeah, it was way in the back end. 29 or 30s, maybe even 30. It was like way at the end, right? With uh, San Francisco, they just came off their Super Bowl season. And then they announced Travis Frederick, center, Wisconsin. I was like, do what? <laughs> <laughs> my son, my son, he was he was the same thing. Like, what? Nobody had him mocked. Nobody was talking about it. Like, I, it caught a lot of fans off guard. And, I, you know, the initial reaction was, you know, a lot of fans were were mad, you know, just like, what are we doing? Pick thirty one. Yeah, but man, it, it ended up being a hell of a pick, and and really, you saw the you saw what he was going to be early on. So you you see him get drafted thirty one, a, a center. What are we doing? But then you start to think about, okay, well, here's the plan. They drafted Tyron Smith in twenty eleven. Okay, let let's fortify the center. You know, they were playing with Phil Costa, these these kind of like, you know, mm. average guys. I remember Phil Costa very well. So, that, Garrett, and that's the thing about Garrett. He did have a plan here, you know, as much as people hate him and can't stand him. When he got hired as a Cowboys coach, that was his his earmark. His his trademark was, we want to get back to the 90s, the, the offensive line. So, he had a plan. Uh, Old school football. Yeah. yeah. Tyron, I mean, Tyron Smith. And His first you, draft pick. Yeah, and then you get Frederick, then you get Martin, Lyle Collins. I mean, he he built that that line really well, you know. So, mm-hmm. and, and and there was reports coming out that Travis Frederick did give the Dallas Cowboy organization uh, a heads up that this might happen. So that I mean, the Dallas Cowboys get, did go out and protect themselves. They 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 signed Joe Looney to a one year deal for two point four million dollars. Uh, they got Adam uh, Redman under contract. Um, they got um, they they drafted McGovern, who played center. Um, so, you know, the, the, I mean, they protected themselves here. I I, I out, out of those three, I, I would say it's a battle between J- Joe Looney and McGovern, wouldn't you say? It's an interesting conversation because I think the initial inclination from fans is that uh, you know that that's what it's going to be, Joe Looney versus McGovern. But then you have to. You have to ask yourself, how do you still feel about left guard? You know, how, I mean, we wanted the competition to be between Connor Williams and McGovern because really, honestly, a lot of us feel that McGovern will beat Connor Williams because Connor Williams is upgradable, right? So, yeah, the flexibility is there. He played, uh, I think, uh, 12 or 14 games at center for you know Penn State. So, definitely, he's got the... Uh, the ability and and he even uh, was taking snaps at center. I remember I remember they were making a big a big deal about that uh, last year. You know, and mm-hmm. uh, before he got hurt, he was actually taking snaps at center. I was like, oh, okay, well, what's going on here? So maybe that is the plan. Maybe that's why they drafted him, but also as, as to back up Connor Williams. But now, you know, I I, I wouldn't rule out drafting a. Uh, an offensive lineman, whether it's another guard to compete with Connor Williams or, mm. or you know, center, you know. So it's an interesting conversation. Absolutely. And, you know, the, the impact that Travis Frederick, and this is the last time we'll, we'll talk about him, we'll move on to, to another topic. But, I mean, he, he did so much for the Dallas community and feeding kids. Um, you know, he, he stressed, I mean, just 
just a week ago how the hunger in Dallas is just getting bigger because kids are in that school. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, he does have a foundation in Dallas of feeding uh, the Dallas youth. And, uh, you know, he, he he's not done doing that. He is done with football, but he is not done helping the city of Dallas and their youth. So he positive guy, um, keeping his head held high. Like you, like, you know, he just can't play at that high level and it just really messed him up mentally. I think Joe. Yeah. Well said, man. And, um, that's a great legacy to have. Um, you know, Travis Frederick, I think he was always in the running for, you know, the Walter Payton award. Um, mm-hmm. I know, I know Witten won it one year, but I know Frederick was, you know, right there, you know, in the running all the time because, like you said, you know, uh, the hunger issue around America, you know, Dallas, Fort Worth, metropolitan area. Great work, man. Great work. That needs to be acknowledged, too. It's uh, just what he is, man. Great on and off the field. You can't ask for anything uh, better than, than Travis Frederick, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, just. Man, it, it it it's it sucks as a fan, you know, uh, but uh, but Joe, how does this you know, with Travis Frederick? How does this uh, affect the draft if it does at all? You know, we talked about who they signed, and mm-hmm. you know, we talked about some competition. Um, does losing Travis Frederick really change the draft strategy? It depends on on how they have these guys ranked, first round grades, and that kind of thing. You know, I, I already saw some knee-jerk reactions about drafting a center at 17. You oh. know, C, uh, Cesar Ruiz, um, Cesar Ruiz, the uh, center from Michigan, which is a – he's a pretty good uh, center, to be honest. Um, mm-hmm. That's a good program. Big Ten. Big Ten is yeah, – they're really good. Um, I, Big Ten, to me, is is the, your offensive line uh, conference. You know, you, got, you know, Wisconsin, Ohio State, Michigan – they just keep churning out solid NFL ready offensive linemen. So anyway, at 17, that's too rich. Now, depending on on, on what what they want to do, you could very well see another uh, type of scenario where they trade down. You know, you could trade way the hell down again and get them. I know that um, Ruiz has been kind of mocked down towards uh, the Chiefs, so mm-hmm. uh, it's definitely a possibility. I wouldn't do it. I don't. I think you can get by with with what you have. I would rather, if the plan is to 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 let it be a battle between McGovern and Looney, I'd rather that happen and then have somebody to compete with Connor Williams. So a guard somewhere in this draft might might get drafted. So we'll we'll see, man. It's a big possibility. Uh, let's take a look at uh, uh, Mel Kippers. 3.0 mark mock draft Joe and let's see where he has a Dallas Cowboys. He had CD Lamb for the Cowboys. So what's your thoughts on him? You know, uh, you know we already have Amari Cooper re-signed, you know, to a, a relatively good deal for the Cowboys. Um you know, you get Gallup back, but we we do have an opening there. You know, there was talks about Emmanuel Sanders uh and then there were, he went to the Saints, I believe, right? And then uh, so they were talking about other possibilities at wide receiver. So CD Lamb, I, I don't like that fit, man. He's he's not a slot receiver to me. Um, I think he's more of, of a guy that you're going to have on the outside. So I I, I don't like uh, Mel Kuyper's 3.0 sticking with CD Lamb. Um, I don't see it happening at this point. You know, but what what do you think about that? Yeah, it, it's still shocking to me. You know, because. Just the pieces we left on uh, that we have on defense, you know. I mean, they locked in Gerald McCoy. Um, you know, there, there, there's talks about Don Terry Poe, but that's not official yet. Um, you know, there, there's holes on the defensive line. You know, there's one year deals in the back end with corners and safeties. So, you know, I, I, I don't see why he still has us taking a wide receiver either. Um, you know, and, and it could just be my mindset, Joe, of we need to go defense three picks in a row. <laughs> Um, because I, I, I and, and throw a tight end in there, you know, in the fourth or fifth round. But um, other than that, I think the offense is set. So I, I don't know why um, he has that. And we got a rising star, Michael Gallup. Uh, you know, there. I mean, there is a, a need at a slot receiver, uh, but yeah. I, I just don't understand why he he would have that. Yeah, and it's just kind of that's kind of the uh, the thing that that Kuiper does. Uh, Mel Kuiper is just 
I, I don't know. I, his mock drafts are always kind of wonky to me. I mean, I think the early picks sometimes will hit on those, but after that, uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's up in the air. So I, I like to look at uh, Dane Brugler's. I think he's a little bit more uh, in tune to what the Cowboys, you know, typically like to do. You know, obviously he used to do the draft the draft show with uh, Broadus and, and David Hillman, so he he kind of has a good feel for what the Cowboys do. So if you're looking at mock drafts, I like him, Dane Brugler. Bucky Brooks is, is really good too. He he uh you know played for Coach McCarthy and he did scouting for Coach McCarthy. It would be interesting to me if if at some point he actually brings in Bucky Brooks as some sort of uh consultant or maybe into the scouting department because he's really really good at, at breaking down uh players man if so if you get a chance check out bucky brooks nfl.com he does a great job over there and um Dar- uh daniel jeremiah i think he does a pretty good job too as well draft coverage you know check those guys out uh, i'm gonna have to but uh yeah i mean that, those are all good points guys so yeah definitely check those guys out um and and, and you know when you, if you're putting a mark board together, you know, kind of see what those guys are picking, uh, kind of see who the Cowboys are, you know, looking at and visiting with. I mean, that that helps uh, build your draft board. But you know, so Mel Kipper or Kuiper, he don't have you know Cowboys, you know, drafting a center or anything like that. He still has C.D. Lamb on there. So, so we lose Cowboys lose a player, and, and, and Travis Frederick, and it looks like they might gain one. Joe, uh, Randy Gregory. Uh, has filed for reinstatement for uh, when is this the third time? Um, so, I mean that's good news. Uh, just uh, you know, there, there was reports a couple of years ago that the Cowboys extended them. The NFL actually denied that extension because in the rule book you can't extend suspended players. So that was actually a shock to me when I found that news out. Um, so, um, what's your reaction to Randy Gregory? 27 years old coming back playing football <clears throat> he i mean he's he's a good player man he he's shown that he's able to get it done and i think he would be a, a good uh a good chess piece you know especially if you know you know that he can get to the to the quarterback playing as defensive end uh four three but i feel that he's also has the body type you know as an outside linebacker to pa- pass rush the quarterback so if we're talking about transitioning to three four or having some packages of three, four, he fits perfect. Mm-hmm. He fits perfect. So I like that. Now, as far as the body conditioning, how is he training right now? How is all this, you know, thing with the virus going to affect OTAs and how, um, you know, uh, and how players are going to be able to work out? Are they going to be working out remotely under the the supervision of their strength and conditioning coaches? And you crossing your fingers that they're actually working out. Uh, so there's a lot of questions, you know, this NFL season, you know, um, big, a lot of big questions. That, that's just one of them. So for, for Randy Gregory, it, it's still more of the same because, you know, we we're talking about this offline and you can, you can expand on it, but you know, we talked about, um, could he get suspended again? You know, and under mm-hmm. the new CBA, you know, you can't get, you can't get suspended for, uh, an a instant, positive test. a positive test, but we were talking about that. If you miss a test, you can get in trouble for that, right? Yes, yes. So uh, under the new collective uh, bargain terms, players can no longer be suspended for a positive test for marijuana. But because Randy Gregory was penalized under the old system, Joe, he would need to uh, be welcomed back by Roger Goodell, um, and uh, he could actually still be. Uh, suspended uh, for missing tests and not taking part in a care plan. Yeah, and 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 that's the thing, guys. Um, I'm not worried about him failing a positive test. In fact, it'll probably happen. We know he takes the marijuana for anxiety and um, and things like that, which is totally understandable. So it's good that the NFL is loosening the, these rules. But he did he did have a history of missing tests you know and a missed test counts as what well, used to count as a as a positive test but now they have it where if you skip the test there's consequences for it so that would be my only concern about Randy Gregory don't miss those tests and if he does here we go again you know and 
So that's where I'm talking about fans. They need to be sure that they kind of a little bit temper their expectations, you know, that he doesn't miss the test. Because I think mm-hmm. a lot of fans are kind of assuming he'll be there 100 percent, even if he fails a drug test. He still he's still got to show up, you know. Right. Um, you still need a you still need another pass rush. You need you need to go into this draft as if he's not there. Okay. And if that's the case, right now all you have is Dorrance Armstrong opposite of the Marcus Lawrence. That's how yeah. you have, that's how you have to go into this draft. Yeah. Yeah. So you know th- th- these are the only ends part of the team, right? So you mentioned Demarcus Lawrence, Tyron Crawford, Dorrance Armstrong, Joe Jackson, and Jalen Jelks. Uh, Jackson and Jelks were on injured reserve the entire uh, 2019 season. So uh, Randy Gregory, if he can come back and uh, he, you know, he could contribute and if he's in football shape, I mean, this guy has missed tons of funds of games. Um, he has six and a half sacks in 14 games. He missed 30 games out of 32 regular season games in 2016 and 17 because his suspension Uh, he has only played in 28 games his entire career yeah yikes yeah that's that's a stat line right there for sure but um yeah he would be he would he'd be good he'd be really good in rotation man I, i i really would like to see that him in rotation with with another player um could could bode really well you know, could really absorb the loss of, of Robert Quinn. Because Robert Quinn, yeah, I mean, that speed off the edge, that that Whew. that dip and bend, it, it was uh, good stuff, man. Good stuff out of him. We got a, we got good production out of him on, on the year deal. And Ford, just giving up a six-round pick, I thought. It was a steal. Mm-hmm. And now they might get a third-round cup pick for him. <laughs> so, <clears throat> even better. Absolutely. But uh, let, let's talk about... Let's go back to the NFL draft, Joe, mm-hmm. and let's talk about the, um, this pandemic we're going in with the coronavirus. Serious still. Um, yeah. You know, a lot more counties and states are, I mean, are shutting this thing down. Um, as If you're an essential part of the community, then, you know, you have to continue doing your job and help the community or, you know, help the agriculture of America uh, in a sense. But, um, you know, that they the NFL already pulled, pulled out of, of Vegas. Um, so there will be no draft in Vegas. Uh, they, they, they expect to be held in a studio. Yeah. Um, but you know, if, if more, more cases arise, right. I mean, how would this even happen, Joe? Yeah. It's, it's, uh, this is a very legitimate conversation, everybody. I, I know some people might be like, Oh, you know, Nah, it's gonna happen. No, man, this is reality. This is the world that we're living in, uh, and and uh, the NFL operates out of New York, and they're in a major catastrophe right now. I, I, I'm I'm worried about them. Actually, I feel like there's gonna be a lot of you know stuff coming out of that. And then, then obviously the other studios in uh, California, LA, they're they're right behind New York. So how? What is the plan? And, and you know, I, I tweeted this earlier. If you notice, guys, they haven't been doing uh, game football morning. Uh, that show has been, I guess, delayed or n- not on air. And NFL Total Access. Right now, they're just running reruns and games and top 100s and top 10, 100 players and all this other stuff. So, What's the plan? You know, we already know, like you said, Mike, they already, you know, talked about they're not going to be able to do it in Vegas. And it seems mm-hmm. like this this thing is just progressing exponentially, exponentially. So it's a legitimate question. Does the NFL have the capability to do a broadcast? Can Where is, uh, you know, who, who, you know, can you fly anybody around? You know, there's talks about domestic flights being shut down so could you fly michael Irvin? could you fly deon sanders could you fly uh rich eisen into some studio with you know what i mean so and 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 then you have the prospects they're i'm pretty sure they're hunkered down where they're at so Mm -hmm. it's a lot of logistics involved in this and it just seems like this is heading towards almost like an online yahoo draft you know where Maybe they get somebody online talking about the picks, maybe through a, 
video conferencing, but I don't even know if that might be the best we get out of it. You know, I, I don't see how they're going to be able to do a full production, you know, with the camera guys, your uh, set guys and studio and your dress rehearsals and all that. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot that goes. Mm-hmm. This is a, these are really high produced shows. So, um, Well, what we know is uh, Tom uh, Pelissero. He just, he just tweeted out, he, he works for NFL Network. He said, NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell sent a memo to clubs tonight saying all club facilities will close at 6 p.m. Wednesday with limited exceptions. The, the league will reassess April 8th with advice from, esper, uh, from experts. Mm-hmm. So NFL teams, like many, will, know, uh, will, will now know uh, they're staying at home. There it is, guys. That's uh, that's going to be the next milestone. And right now, it's just kind of getting to the point where, you know, well, I hate to say it, but it's almost like we're t- fighting for survival here as, as human beings. <laughs> you you know? know it. It's mm-hmm. uh, a lot of things are getting shut down. Things are coming to a halt. Hopefully, guys, everybody out there is able to do the social, dis- and social distancing and staying in when when your um, leaders are telling you to stay in don't don't go out you know it's uh don't be spring breaking don't be out in the clubs and bars if, if they're still open stay home man you know get stay yeah. get you some groceries don't even get food to go man it's uh it's scary right now and um you're if the nfl is taking it this serious where they're talking about april 8th that's just around the corner and um mm-hmm. we're seeing how everything around the world is is uh is changing by the day by the day i mean you turn on the news and it's this is happening or this is shutting down or you know we need more help we need more help and we'll see guys i i hope that we that the this thing goes away man i hope that you know these these things that the americans are doing right now are able to slow this down and and get it out of here maybe it becomes a seasonal thing where it just disappears with with the rising temperatures of summer coming up but I don't know. Wait, well, wait, wait, let wait, me wait. uh well the nfl draft could be delayed um this is what i'm finding out now mm-hmm. uh, the league's general manager subcommittee reportedly voted six to one to approve a recommendation that the draft scheduled to be held april 23rd 25th be delayed uh due to teams difficulties in preparing for the event um and then uh and then here, here's here's something for you too, Joe. Uh, I think a lot of owners aren't sold on keeping it on schedule. Um, of course, the the power owners are calling uh, the shots. Like, hey, I want I want this to uh, you know to stay on on task. Um, but it'll it'll be the toughest month with the virus. Uh, April will be. Um, and it, I think if the NFL keeps it on schedule, I, I honestly think it would be a poor look for the National Football League, Joe. Yeah, yeah, that's the other part of this is the optics, right? You're looking at, uh, I think they already kind of took a little bit of a hit of continuing free agency. I I know as fans, we were still kind of getting through the early stages of this pandemic. So we were like, okay, free agency frenzy, here we go. This is what we're doing. All right, we got this guy. But literally, you know, here we are in, in week two of free agency frenzy. They're not even really covering it, you know? You don't see, mm-hmm. I mean, there's no NFL access talking about it. So, um, it's, a. Uh, I don't know, man. It feels like it is going to get delayed. If it were me, I would, you know, and, and that might delay the season. I, I would say this is going to be a domino effect where you're going to have to delay the season. And, it, and I think it's a good idea because what if you draft a player and something happens to the player? You know, this, this thing is everywhere. I mean, it's freaking everywhere, man. You or know? an older coach. Or, yeah. You know? Yep. There you go. Yeah. No. I mean, we we saw Sean Payton get it, and it, it kind of he was able to pull through it. Um. So, but the thing about this dang virus is, you just don't know how it's going to affect you. Uh, you. There's you know, there's reports of healthy people getting it, not doing good on comas and ICU, and young people dying now. So, anybody that's young out there, you know. And this isn't a soapbox, guys. This is just something that we're reporting the draft, but it is something that we need to talk about. You know, we, we care about our fans out there that listen to the show and things like that. So we want all you guys to be safe as well. 
Yeah. Absolutely. I, uh, it, it's just crazy. You know, I mean, you go into your local grocery store, or, you know, just, just whatever you're doing, and it's almost like a movie. I mean, you, you look at the traffic in L.A., which, you know, I was there, you know, th this past summer, and, I mean, it was bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic Sunday morning at 9 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and you, know, you look at the videos now, and I mean, the highways are just empty. I mean, you know, people are staying home, doing the right thing, and, you know, there's some out there that aren't. And, you know, I, it, it's better if you want this to go away, and if you want a football season, just stay home, wash your hands, social distancing. You know, it, it's sad, too, because – you know, people are having newborn babies and they're, you know, the, the baby's grandma and grandpa can't even touch, you know, their, their newborn grandchild because of the social distancing people are doing. It's great practice. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes it's just the reality we got to live in, Joe. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if anything, it really is pretty much it is fatal for the elderly. So that um, we, we do know that for a fact that that data is that is out there. That's it does affect the elderly way worse than it does uh, younger people. But we are seeing younger people affected in Europe, Italy, Spain. So this isn't, uh, this virus is not discriminating, you know, race, <laughs> age, color, location. We got, we got to get a hold of this thing, man. You know, pull through it. Yeah. Pull through it. And it's all about common sense and being smart, Joe. Yep. That's, that's what it boils down to but. it is yep that's it right there man we get through that and we'll get our football back guys we love football we love the cowboys we love the draft we'll get it it, it will happen eventually but you know like you said the april month is going to be i think that's where this thing is going to peak we all gotta power through it everybody power through it exactly absolutely um but until then guys we'll talk to you next tuesday uh remember uh, we did a do a show, a special edition on Saturday, guys. So right after this one, go click on that one. Uh, give us a review. Give us five stars if you can. Leave us a comment on any platform this is on, Podbean, iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, uh, and on Cowboys blog on YouTube, guys. So drop a comment. We appreciate you guys. Uh, we we, we did gave you a double dose of the Frisco Report in less than a week. Yeah. That was pretty good. No, yeah, actually, three doses in, in a week. So that's good stuff. Joe, uh, where can they find you, Joe? Yeah, you guys, you, you know, you can find me on YouTube, and that's Cowboys Blog. Hit me up on Cowboys Blog on YouTube. Instagram and Twitter, it's Cowboys Blog Net, N E T. Absolutely. I'm, I'm Dallas Cowboy Football News on YouTube and on Facebook. DCF News One on Twitter, guys. Give me a follow, give me a mention, give me a DM. Let's talk X's and O's. And the only way to do that is by hitting me up on those three because that's where the conversation starts. This is the Frisco Report. Follow us on Twitter, too, at the Frisco Report. We'll see you next Tuesday. Peace. Peace.